Okay, everybody, here we go. Rock classification, igneous rocks. This is Mr. Gazza yet again, and uh, let's just get right to it. First off, I can't stress this enough, um, to tell us the igneous rock, these are the main things you want to look for. Glassy texture, um, or vesicular texture, or angular interlocking minerals in no order or pattern. Okay, randomly placed. Um, let's not forget the order or pattern is going to be more of a metamorphic rock. So we can use this for as an introduction to using the reference tables or as a review. Either one of those, um, this should be useful for that. So let's start. This is the reference table for igneous rocks and these are the names of them. And I think this helps to, I'm just going to start placing them, uh, the rocks, over the names or well, right next to it. That's obsidian and I'm going to just place them I have this is pumice right there. Maybe I'll I can do no. Uh, maybe I'll just do it that way. Pumice, and I don't have all the rocks here. Let me see. I have some some scoria right here. Yeah, you really see the vesicles quite well. And then um, that's your basalt. Gabbro and rhyolite right there. I'll, I'm actually going to place them to the side, which is kind of good, so you can see the um, you can see the names. I think that's going to help. My pegmatite I have quite a oh, quite a large piece of pegma, pegmatite. I'm going to put that right put that like right there, if that's okay. Put that right there. Uh, dia right there. And andesite right there. Okay. All right. Now it may look a little bit all over the place. So I have some peridotite too. I'll put that. Uh, that's kind of right there. All right. Okay. Some basic things. Once you do this, it shows. Uh, I hope you see some patterns here. And the patterns basically should go like this. On this side of the reference table on the left side, you're going to see their lighter color, correct? Lighter color because they're made of lighter color minerals. As you go this way in the reference table towards the right, you see how they get darker. Dark minerals, dark minerals, and this is a lot of that, those greenish minerals. And then the, in the middle section is kind of in between. So we're going to call this diorite, how it's black and white, kind of intermediate color, neither light nor dark. And um, this right here, I don't know how yeah, I guess you can see this andesite is um, kind of in between. It's kind of a grayish, so that's why that's in the middle. So that's that's key. This side on the left side is called felsic. Felsic because it's minerals that have high silicon and aluminum in it, and and the rocks over here are mafic, and that's because it has more mag uh, magnesium and iron in those in those rocks. Sorry, the minerals have more magnesium and iron. So that's one thing that jumps out. The other thing is, if you look, these are extrusive rocks right here. Volcanic means that they basically form from volcanoes, they um, from lava that flows on the surface of Earth. And these are all intrusive or plutonic rocks, which means that they form from magma that cooled below a surface. It took a long time to cool, and that long time to cool causes the minerals to be quite large. The longer it takes to cool, the larger the minerals are. And you can see that the texture kind of shows it. Here, my obsidian has glossy texture. Now, it, if you can see also too, do you see right here, you see how that circular kind of, where's my pen? My, my pencil's right here. You see the circular? That's called the conchoidal fracture, how it kind of breaks. And that's really, it breaks kind of like glass. And you really see it on this piece quite well. But So this is a glassy, cools very quickly. And then you have vesicular texture here. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah, you kind of see those air pockets in there. This is very low density because from trapped gas, um, trapped gases in the lava, you see it here also. In, in this is basically scoria. As you go down on this level, and, and these minerals, the black ones are kind of large, but the, the gray stuff here, the pinkish minerals here, and the black here, it's fine grain texture. Um, the minerals are in there, you just can't see them. If you were to cut this real thin and look through a microscope, you could see the minerals and they'd be angular and interlocking. As you get, so this is called a fine texture right in here. 
and then th this line right here, these going across, now you can start seeing the minerals. You can really right, you can see the minerals here right, you can see the individual minerals, you can see them in this one as well focus I don't know how well it's focusing. You see the minerals right there. Okay, so this is coarse texture. This tells me it cooled below ground and took um, cooled slowly. It took a while to cool, and by a while we're talking months, years. We're talking years, really. Um, so that's cool. And then you go down my my pegmatite here. This is called very coarse texture, and these minerals are much bigger, bigger than a centimeter, and you can see if it focuses okay, the minerals here are quite large potassium feldspar here uh, this colorless stuff all in here is quartz these are very large minerals here and this tells me this cooled deep below the surface took a very long time to cool and that's the basic classification that we have. Okay? This side right here is going to be felsic, and this side is mafic, and um, the texture is in there also. And I just want to point out you can see the peridotite. These are made of these, uh, made often composed of dark minerals, but it has like kind of uh, some of those green minerals, um, like a lot of olive oil. You can kind of see the green tint to it. So I think that's cool. Alright, and uh, so thanks a lot, and hopefully this is a good uh, introduction to classifying or review. Enjoy Mr. Gaz signing off.